Improving our communication skills is vital to success in all areas of life, especially in the workplace. In the book, Crucial Conversations, the authors provide a seven-step method to help you improve your communication skills. In today's video, I wanna show you how I've implemented those seven steps and how you could do so to ensure that 2024 is your best year yet in the area of communication. If you're new here, my name is Michael and I'm a higher education leader based in Los Angeles, California, and I hold my doctorate in organizational leadership. So the book Crucial Conversations is something that I read nearly a decade ago. It really helped me improve my communication skills, especially at work when you're dealing with high pressure environments or you're dealing with a lot of deadlines or you're just trying to navigate those interpersonal relationships when you're new to a position. So step number one in Crucial Conversations is all about starting with the heart and coming really with a place of empathy and from a, a positive intent. It's often we could find ourselves, especially in the office, where we have a lot of negative situations going on, a lot of problems that we're dealing with. And it's really hard to change another person, but you can change the way you react to a situation. So when you go into a conversation, don't make assumptions, have a positive thought in mind and be malleable to the situation at hand and not think that you only have the right answer. And also in regards to this, we want to make sure we're very open in dialogue whenever we're conversing about a problem or a situation in the workplace. You want to make sure that you are open to being wrong. We are all wrong. We all make mistakes and we often go into conversations thinking that we are on the right side of history, but we have to remember that we may be wrong and we need to be open to that to ensure that dialogue flows well and that you are engaged in a conversation that is not closed off on, on either side of the situation. Step number two in Crucial Conversations is about staying in dialogue. Now, I think this is more relevant to today than maybe when this book was first written, but we could often get distracted by our phones and other things going on in our lives where we don't necessarily stay completely engaged in the conversation that's going on. So we want to make sure that throughout the conversation that we're having, that we are staying in dialogue, that there's a two-way conversation going on, that we are both being able to express our points of view and the concerns that we have, and that we're not being distracted whenever we are in that conversation. Step number three in Crucial Conversations is to make it safe. You want to make sure that both parties feel safe in the situation that they're engaging in and the conversation that they're having. If you do go into the situation very hostile and very angry, it's likely that that person that you're conversing with is going to shut down. And when a person shuts down, obviously you're not going to get anywhere and you're not gonna to get to a point of resolution. So it's really important for you to come in, again, with empathy, with a positive intent, like I said at the beginning, but also making that person feel safe in the way that they can converse with you and feel free to share their opinions and their dialogue and the way that they saw the story play out. One of the best ways to reestablish that safe space is to make sure you are listening. We could get so caught up in sharing our story and trying to prove our point that we often don't listen to the other person that we're talking to. We really need to be compassionate and we need to be curious about how that other person saw the situation play out. That will reestablish that trust and that will reestablish that safe space that you really want to have in any kind of crucial conversation. Step number four in crucial conversation is don't get hooked on emotion. Again, a lot of the time, when we do come into conversations, especially at work and the situations become heated, we could often be firing off and we may become very overwhelmed and caught up in our emotions. So it's really key for you to stay grounded in that situation and be able to navigate when people are getting heated or hostile towards you and make sure that you keep what the end goal is in mind to coming to a resolution. And often we come to a situation where we feel that there's only a right or a wrong in the situation, but oftentimes when we work through and have conversations with individuals, we can see other perspectives and know that there is a bridge and a pathway forward to resolving the issue at hand. Step number five in Crucial Conversations is agreeing to a mutual purpose. Now, 
it's really important for you to stay focused on the things that you do agree with and the things that you could find in common in a situation or a conversation so that you can come to some sort of mutual agreement. If you come into a situation where you know, you feel you're right and you feel the other person is wrong and you're not able to focus on the positives and the things that you do agree on, you're often going to get railroaded and you're not going to come to a mutually beneficial situation for each individual. So come into the conversation with a positive intent and also with a mutually agreed beneficial positive outcome in mind. Step number six in crucial conversations is separating the facts from the story. So when you come into any new situation or a, a confrontation that you're dealing with at work, you want to make sure that you first lay out all the facts. The story is going to vary based upon perspective and how you saw that situation play out versus how the other person saw the situation play out. So really important to start the groundwork of the conversation with laying out all of the facts in the situation. And then after stating the facts, you could each share your side of the story and have a conversation in a respectful and an open way so that each person's story can be laid out. And again, here, you wanna make sure you're open and that you're actively listening because even though you presented your story, as the other person presents their side of the story, your perspective may shift and you really need to be open to that. You can't be so hard headed that your story is correct and your story is backed up with facts. You need to be able to see that other person's perspective and again, come to a mutual understanding of each other. And then finally, step number seven is agreeing to a clear action plan. Now, this doesn't mean that you aren't going to have continued conversations about this subject, but it does mean that you come to a mutual understanding of agree, an agreed upon action plan that you're going to implement moving forward. And it's very possible that maybe no decision is made in that first conversation that you have. So you need to be able to come back and have multiple conversations in situations that are very complex. And the biggest thing about this clear action plan is to make sure that you're actually taking steps forward to implement it. There's nothing worse than coming to an agreed upon plan and then doing nothing with it. Now that next step might be a next meeting to continue the conversation, or it actually might be implementing steps to take advance work to for on each party's part to make sure that the situation does get resolved and then moving forward the same situation doesn't arise again so i really hope this helps you navigate the conversations that you have moving into 2024 and that you find a lot of peace and openness and empathy and a positive intent in a lot of your conversations throughout the next year. I would love it if you would also subscribe to my channel and also be sure to check out my other video here where I show you some effective strategies for improving the retention and also the job satisfaction of millennial employees in your workplace. That's all for this week, everybody. Take care. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.